Hi, and welcome to part one of my German half track entry for Adamann's German half track group build, which will be running from January 2017 all the way to June 2017. And so there's still plenty of time to come on down and get your German half track and uh, start joining the group. We're here on YouTube, and you can also find us somewhere on. Google Plus at one of the community sites. Also, if you have a strong affinity towards American half tracks of the Second World War, I'm sure Adam Mann has no problem as he's been mentioning that throughout the uh, series. So come on down and have some fun. Today we're looking at Trumpeter's uh, German SDKFZ 7 8 ton half track. It's the early version. And I am at section 15, according to the instructions, and I'm saying I'm about halfway near completion. And so this is a good place for me to stop and talk about what I've been doing. Um, let's see now. As far as trumpeter kits, I don't have enough experience to say whether it's a good kit or a bad kit. I think this is probably number two as far as trumpeter kits. And the first one I built was uh, a journey. And it's a very special model for me, but um, it was a bit challenging. Now moving on to this kit, I'd say it's still pretty challenging. I think Trumpeter is definitely a very detailed kit, and it's going to be a challenging kit. But overall, I've been having a good time. Some of my uh, complaints has been that it doesn't quite fit together like a Tamiya kit. You grab a Tamiya kit, and it just falls in place. Um, this kit has not been like that. It's been a little bit of a, a lot of dry fitting and a lot of cockeyed spots. Um, the most noticeable difficulty as far as uh, alignment issues has been the drive shaft where the transmission is. It is a little cockeyed and if you look at it from a certain angle the uh, drive wheels tend to go off in different directions but some of that is my problem and not trumpeters. There was an opportunity early in the build where I could have sanded away or grinded away a piece of the frame that was causing most of the problem. But I just pushed forward and I'm kind of stuck with what I got. And for the most part, it's not a big deal because most of what you're looking at right now is all going to be covered up and buried with the other half of the model kit, which is going to somehow come like this. And then more stuff is going to get piled up. So I'm not overly concerned about it. And yes, there's lots of detail. Probably too much detail. Um, one thing I, I, a criticism I have was the photo etch. They do come with photo etch. We got uh, two frets. One right here. And the other one here. I found the, the photo etch to be a bit difficult in places it was hard to bend now I use one of these uh, etchmate doohickeys so it's not like I don't know what I'm doing but uh, I find that um, dragons photo etch bends a lot easier and this wasn't the case but that's okay um, most of the photo etch that was used for the first half I only used two pieces the rest were very um, my new detail so small and insignificant that I just wasn't going to waste my time even if it was a dragon kit so I never bothered with it um, but it came together well I used my super glue and it came together the only place where I used it is right here below the the come along for the cable wheel there's two uh, square square bend braces holding that together and that's it um, comes with a complete engine right here, and it's pretty detailed. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, one of the things is that you're not really going to see it once the build is complete. Now, I've seen a lot of other model builders, they usually take the, the vent walls of the hood off so that you can have an exposed engine, and also most likely if it's in the summertime, perhaps for ease of... Uh, cooling the engine down and having some vents they probably would have taken them off anyway I have yet to see any 
pictures. I've been looking all over the Google and the internet and most of the pictures I see have the, the vent covers on but it's not outside the realm of impossibility and I know it's uh, at the end of the day it's just style. Let's look at the wheels. The wheels are pretty nice. They got really good detail. Um, let's see, this is the spare wheel and it's really nice. It's very soft and squishy. I'm not too sure about painting if uh, that's going to cause issues or not but we'll do some research. Um, and they go on to the rim nice and easy. The wheel system and axle is completely articulated. Now pay attention to this though. You need to articulate it in that position and then glue it. You can't um, fix it once you build it because there's a lot of uh, tie rods and other rods that go and connect into the steering wheel. So at this point right now as you're looking at the model I can't turn the wheels without breaking the kit. So make sure if you want to have the wheels turned at a right or left angle do so before you do your gluing. That way it's all squared and looks pretty good. Um, what else has we got? The cable. They gave you the option of cable and this was kind of a disappointment. Um, this is just typical Tamiya string really. It's just a little brighter and a little newer but it's just string so it's kind of got a lot of fuzzies on it. So I never bothered with the the cable as far as uh, getting it on the come along. I just left it because A the string looked, didn't look that good and also B it wouldn't fit through the aperture in the rear where the hookup is and I just said you know it's again it's gonna be buried look well, this is what we're dealing with it's gonna look like that no one's really gonna see it ever again even at a model show I highly doubt the judges are gonna be looking underneath there so um, I just let it go the frame is not like a Tamiya frame it, it the frame comes in several pieces in fact you put the frame all together on your own so alignment is something you need to be concerned about I did have to do a little bit of grinding and filling in the rear section here but other than that it was fine so we talked about the photo etch, the wheels, the string overall it built well um, if you want to be really awesome and crazy you can uh, all the wheels um, on their bogies uh, articulate so you can have it going over rubble or tree trunks or signposts um, and you got plenty of extra track I got uh, 20 links to spare though uh, that's the one real complaint I have with um, this kit is that Trumpeter actually wrote in the printing that you need 108 links per side and I realized that that was a serious typo and what they really meant was 64 and then after my actual installation of the tracks I realized that you really just need 54 so um, I think if I'm disappointed about this kit so far it's really just editing in the instructions and um, I'll even show it to you just so that I'm not making this up so here's the instructions and uh, let's see yeah right there it says uh, 108 links for one side so we had to divide that by two coming to 64 and then in reality let's see it says reality I used 54 so it's not a big deal. Well, it is a big deal. I think it frustrates model builders, uh, especially if they're younger or newer into the hobby. Uh, more seasoned, a model builder might not be a big deal, but this could really uh, make or break a newbie. So, and I'm allowed to complain. Why not? Uh, other than that, it's been good. Um, I'm looking forward to the the second phase. I think what. I'm going to do though is uh, this will be the complete sub assembly. What I'll do now is break off my tracks, break out all my wheels. All my wheels are glued in with uh, PVA glue. Take all those down. And I'm going to do a quick check on the bottom for any ejection pin marks. 
which was something what I did is um, early on because you're just working with the the basics of the framework a lot of that was just buried in the process of building the kit up so what I'll do now is take off the wheels and tracks flip it over and what is actually visible what are some of the visible ejection pin marks and I'll just fill those in but at this point it's really a matter of painting I wanna paint it and weather it just as it is now as a sub-assembly and then once that's ready then I can go on to the second part of the build which would be the top and and that's it I also have a few details the uh, engine fan and a few pieces of the engine and the exhaust pipe still has to go in but for the most part this is what we got um, and lastly I will mention the uh, the front leaf spring it comes in two pieces and when you put it together you have this ginormous uh, San Andreas fault going through it so it required a lot of filling I just put in about three coats of Mr. Surfacer 1000 I felt that that was an easier cleanup process than using other types of putty and it smoothed out just fine so that and the problem is is that you really you can see it from the front because there's not a lot covering as opposed to the leaf springs here you really can't see them anyway and they just needed a little bit of filing so I'm going to call this uh, an episode and I hope you guys are having fun. Again, um, if you're interested in these German half tracks and have one and you want to take part, come on down. There's plenty of time. I'm sure Adam would and everybody else here in the group would, would welcome anybody. So check us out. And this will be it. So hopefully for episode two, I will have um, the top piece done. All right. Take care. Bye.